get some more reaction now to England naming their 28-man initial training squad ahead of the Rugby World Cup. Delighted to say we can speak live now to the 2003 World Cup winner, Will Greenwood. Will, thanks so much for joining us. Just to start with and get, and get some initial reaction, no players, of course, from Saracen, Sale, Leicester or Northampton because, of course, they were involved in the Premiership semi-finals. How yeah. much can we kind of read into this squad? Um, it would be, I suppose, a little bit like taking the Arsenal, the Man City, Liverpool and the Man United players out of an England squad. <laughs> uh, it might not quite be exactly the same. So when you say how much can we read into it, surely there'll be some players who aren't in those uh, four teams that you've named who are the best current teams uh, in England who would still be in it. But there'll be those who are getting an opportunity to have a run around with Steve that might not have done. We know that Leicester and Northampton come back next week. And then because of the World Cup being, um, because of the, the Premiership and, and the final finish, this is a little bit later this year, the players from both um, Saracens uh, coming back later on, another two weeks. So we won't really know a huge amount for the first four weeks. However, these are the names that have been in and around Steve's squad uh, for the previous uh, five months of his tenure. No huge surprises. The ones that, that may stand out would be Zach Mercer, who's been playing in Montpellier, top 14 player of the year, unable to be selected for England for years. Uh, but in the meantime, I think he's joined Gloucester um, for next year. Um, and then on the back of that, he's therefore uh, registered to an English club, so can now join the squad for this World Cup. Um, Don Brandt is obviously a, a big star player, but in the background, Billy Vonapola is named in the sort of 31 mound, continuing his rehabilitation, which is interesting to see him back in because he wasn't included during the Six Nations when he was fit and available and, and Steve was picking the side. You mentioned um, Zach Mercer there and him being one of the, the most notable inclusions, I suppose, hasn't played for England in, in five years. What, what do you make of that decision to bring him in? Uh, yeah, outstanding. I was lucky enough. I mean, I was sort of a water boy. They, working with the Barbarians in November, I got to coach with two of the best coaches in the world, Ronan O'Gara, who took La Rochelle to another European Cup trophy, and um, Razor Robertson, Scott Robertson, who's the Crusaders, but incoming New Zealand coach. Zach was part of that 25, 28-man squad, heck of a kid, uh, done amazingly well, wasn't getting picked for England three or four years ago and was, I believe, supremely brave. Sometimes players, you can think about moving abroad and taking another chance and experiencing another culture. And sometimes you just go, Ooh, I'll just, I'll, I'll cling on for what might be. And he didn't wait, he just went, halved it up in France, uh, playing so well. Heck of a number eight. And now it gives us some really good options at number eight. Obviously, Billy Bonapola returning from injury, Alex Dombrandt, um, and now Zach Mercer into the pot. So a position of real strength in that back row. Um, we've obviously got the sale boys, Tom Curry, coming back in later on. Tom, interesting to see the London Irish boys, for those who are unaware, because I know it's all been about Champions League and, and football the last two or three weeks, but London Irish... I've, I think that my words are right, gone into administration, the third club from the Premiership who've gone under this year. So you'll see players like Will Joseph, Ollie Hassel, Collins, Tom Pearson, named as London Irish players, but they won't be London Irish players uh, for very long. Um, some of the, the higher squads, uh, I think Tom Pearson's been linked with Northampton. Some of the teams in the top half of the table will be looking to see if they can squeeze some of these fantastically talented London Irish players in underneath their salary cap. But at the moment... They have a London Irish name tag uh, in, in name, but not in reality. That's, that's a really good point. Um, Will, when, when we're just looking at, I suppose, where England are at the moment, obviously we know it's a disappointing Six Nations for them. What do you think Steve Forthwick will be specifically looking for from, from this camp? Yeah, um, detail, detail, detail. He's a detail man. He's a data man. Um, get your structure right, get your organisation right, make yourself difficult to beat. That's, that, I mean, the reality, that's how Steve's teams are going to play. They do play rugby, but once they get into the right position on the field, this isn't an all-court team. Steve Both is not going to create an all-court um, game of rugby. Um, he's going to be outstandingly disciplined in terms of the detail of the lineup. He's strong on the set piece. He's, he's brought in basically the whole of the Leicester Tigers coaching staff. 
that he won the Premiership with in uh, 2022. They're all there now. Wigglesworth's about to join, I think, once his Leicester contract runs out. The forwards coach, the fitness geezer, they're all they're all coming in. And how did they beat Saracens in the final? They kicked a lot. They chased a lot. They were outstanding in their set piece. Uh, they got up and they made a huge number of tackles for Kevin Sinfield. So I don't think we're going to see um, playing from the back. I don't think uh, we're going to see um, uh, Edison-style uh, taps and, and nudges as Brighton have done so brilliantly in the Premier League. It's very much um, get rid of it, get it down the far end of the field uh, and, and live off mistakes. And if an opportunity arises, try and take it. So uh, he'll be trying to build on that because the reality is England are miles away or have been miles away from where they should be in terms of the top four, top five teams. Um, in the world, so they can't just hope to, to over a course of three or four friendly games in the summer, which will be very helpful. They can't suddenly find a rhythm and a tempo um, that will allow them to play with ball in hand from everywhere. Plus, that's not Steve's style. So he's going to try and become absolute experts in what they can be good at quickly uh, and try and mitigate uh, their weaknesses by simply removing them and not playing from those areas of the field that could expose them. And with that in mind then, how hopeful are you for England going into the World Cup come September that they really can compete out in France? So, I mean, there's such a big caveat here um, because England have got a real chance in the World Cup and you go, hold on a sec, you've just said they couldn't beat an egg. Uh, and they have really struggled to beat the top teams. They've got 50 points put on them by France at Twickenham. So you're thinking, how is this possible? Well, where they'll be and when they do the World Cup draw is so far in advance of the World Cup that they've given England one of the great leg-ups you, you could hope. I mean, in, the, in one half of the draw, the top five teams in the world are in. I mean, you've got New Zealand, France, South Africa, Ireland and Scotland on one half of the draw. They're over there scrapping it out. On the other half of the draw, you've got the also rounds. You've got Wales, England, uh, Australia, and Argentina, who were ranked sort of six to nine. And they're thinking, well, we can fight it out amongst ourselves, and two of us will be in the semi final um, in Paris uh, come the back end of October, while three of the top five teams in the world will be going home, one before the quarterfinal stage, two at the quarterfinal stage. So, to answer your question a little faster, I believe England will make it to a semi-final because of the way the draw has, has come out of the pot. And with that, um, you put yourself in that mix, you have a chance. Now, when they get to the semi-final, they will be fourth favourites of those four. I have no doubt about that. Uh, however, um, strange things happen in, in the semi-finals. <laughs> strange things happen in sport. Um, well, it was always brilliant speaking to you. Thanks so much for coming on and we'll chat to you soon.